There are 12 group members. You reach out to the group via text and or email, and then you let them know what's going on. And then you ask for prayer, you know, let them know these are my issues and I'm asking for prayer. So then what happens, let's just say for a while, uh, you don't hear anything. And then you think, okay, maybe everybody's kind of like absorbing what it is that I've said. It's, it's just silence. So think about it. Picture that viper snake just sitting there in the grass, right? Just silence, right? And then the next thing you know, the snake attacks. One of the individuals of the group attacks you on every single level, as I just pointed out, with the emotionally all the way down, attacks and cuts through you on every single level, leaving no stone unturned, so to speak, right? And so we're all wired up differently. And we know how some of us can be more uh, aggressive, so to speak, than others. Some of us can be more assertive than others. Some of us can be more dominating than others, right? And so what happens is when you've got a group, there are usually some members of the group that might have more kindred spirits, more laid back, and that type of thing. So nine times out of 10, the person that's chosen to attack you is not the person that set up the attack. If, if that makes sense, the person that's set up to attack you is just like the viper. They're going to come to you at an angle that you would ne uh, never expect. They're going to use an individual of the group to do the attacking, right? And this is going to be an individual of the group that you would never expect. And the reason it's going to be done that way is because you're going to be so stunned and so shocked that in a sense, it's also going to be gaslighting with actions, if that makes sense. You see what I'm saying? It's going to be from an individual who's less domineering, less aggressive. You see what I'm saying? Less assertive, so to speak. And so that's going to actually cause the effect of the attack to actually cut even deeper. And hopefully that's making sense, what I'm saying, right? And so what's happening is they're going to cut through you every single area, right? And then what happens is that once the attack takes place, then they're going, what's going to happen is actually before the attack took place, there had already been a lot of secret meetings that you were not in on. And so just the words that came out in the attack themselves is going to clue you into the fact that these individuals had already been talking about me. It was only a matter of time that this was going to happen. Because I failed to seek the Lord when the countenance changed, right? Then after that, all of the Holy Spirit promptings of like knowing that something's off, feeling a spirit of control or whatever other spirits that's coming off of these individuals. So because I failed to uh, to go and, and check with the Lord, right? And, and have him to uh, have Jesus to intercede on my behalf, right? So instead of doing that, when you do not go and stop and think about it and take a be still in no moment, right? Stop the energizer bunny mode, right? Of that disconnection cycle and, and stopping so you can have a be still and no moment, right? And then have a come to Jesus moment for the revelation, right? But instead of doing that, you've been going and going and going. You saw the person's countenance change, right? You got the promptings from the Holy Spirit. You didn't go and seek the Lord and try to get some direction and wisdom and guidance as to how to move forward with this group and or particular individuals in the group. So then what happens, you get attacked. And when the attack comes, like I said, they're going to pick, the ringleader is going to pick, pick a, um, the, like one of the least aggressive uh, individuals of the group. And then that particular individual, when they get you, like I said, it's going to be such a shock. You're not really going to know how to respond to it. You see what I'm saying? And so then what happens is that there has to be a cover up after that. Once the attack takes place, everybody in the group, particularly the ringleader, has to make sure where well, we've got to make sure that our version of what happened is different from her version of what happened. And so what they do is take the members of the group who might not even be narcissistic, but make sure that they pull them on board. You understand what I'm saying? So there's a lot of gaslighting, blame shifting 
cover up and all of that. And then the group will even go so far as sending individual group members to call in or text you and or meet up with you to have you to admit that the whole thing was your fault. So you see what I'm saying? All of the blame shifting and the gaslighting and then not even taking responsibility for the fact that this person attacked you. And in essence, it was like a whole group attack because as that person attacked you, everybody else was silent. So vipers are really sneaky. And like I said, they use that ambush foraging to do their dirty work. And they will sit for hours at a time trying to figure out what is the perfect angle to come to you at in the perfect moment, right? But it's going to be right when for some reason they know you're about to step out of your wilderness season or you're about to be elevated from a higher level than you're already at. So they're just trying to find that perfect moment to pounce, right? And that takes us to number three. Vipers blend into their surroundings. Think about snakes. Think about being outside, working in your garden, putting seeds in the garden, right? Uh, putting seeds so you can get some what vegetables, like some tomatoes and or lettuce, uh, pumpkins. You might even want to uh, grow some beans. Some people grow beans in their gardens, right? Lima beans and black eyed peas and all different type of things you have in your garden. Or you could just be out there planting some flowers.